Hi, and welcome to Sarah Sky's channel where I'm gonna show you this e-spinner that I built. Yes, you're right kids, I built an e-spinner and why would anybody build, build an e-spinner? I don't know, COVID, 2020, I started watching YouTube videos of people spinning yarn and I said, hey, that looks great. Uh, so I decided to throw my hand in the hat, hat in the ring, ring in the whatever. Um, here she is in all of her glory. Let's just push this out of the way. Here she is in all of her glory. My e-spinner. And I'm going to walk you through what it looks like, how it works, and how I built it. So the first things you're gonna need is some wood. Here's what mine looked like before I cut it out and put it together. I used pocket holes on the bottom and glue on the front, and I used hinges to hold the side and the top on. So on that back, I put hinges and a clasp. Um, so this is just basics of making a box. You could use practically any box already built. You just need a hole for you know, your power to come out, your pentiometer, and then your um, drive band to come out from your motor. But here is my box, almost finished. I just gotta put the top on, which you have to make a hole in the top. And I use this Dremel tool make a nice hole. Here's another hole that I'm putting in here that I shouldn't have because that didn't work. But here's another hole. Just lots of holes. You gotta put some holes in your box. <laughs> this is for the pentiometer to fit into. And that's the peg I willed for uh, the brake system. But uh, don't put it there. And now I'm gonna explain to you all the other stuff. So this is the whole thing, and the way I made it is that it has a, a clasp here, so we can, this whole thing can come off. This whole thing is made of fishing wire, springs from a pen that I just cut in half, an old broken pen, and then a oak, um, dowel thing that I carved into a peg because you need a peg shape to be able to hold the tension. So this was a latch that I got at Michael's and these are cup hooks that I got at Lowe's. So we're gonna, so what you can do, you can take that out and this can open. We're gonna take this whole thing off so the bobbin and the flyer that you just get as a piece from the woolery. So um, that comes like that. And I um, found the dimensions off the internet and built the box to those dimensions. Um, okay, so then I also made this little hook, which is some wire and some tape. And that's for getting the yarn through the orifice. And then these are um, bearings that that you can buy for $7 that match this flyer. So I just bought the bearings when I bought this. Inside is all the magic. And honestly, <laughs> you can see it's pretty dirty in here. Um, so I guess you gotta open it up and clean it out sometimes. This is a fairly simple setup. I have the XD3420 long shaft, which um, I have just taped a little groove, like taped it higher over here so that my hairband just runs here. And I use a hairband that I bought at the dollar store as my um, drive band and it works great. This is the um, control that I bought, and it has a pentiometer, which is connected here, which I drilled out 
a hole to be able to put on the front. And this is what controls the speed of um, my spinner. And then this is just a piece of cork that I made to fit on there. Um, so this controller only goes one direction. I didn't get a switch with it. So there's a different controller that I would pick now and I will link both this one and that one. So I would not recommend this one. I would recommend a different one. Um, that's only a little bit more money. But all you're gonna need is you connect the motor, connects to this, the pentiometer is connected to this, and then this connects to the power. And the power switch that I bought ha came with this. So, and then this is just speaker wire that is running the power through it. And it's good enough, it works well. So, um, so it's important to get something like this if you do get this. Um, and that did come with my 110 volt AC DC adapter. So that will be linked down below. So that's, that's how simple it is. I have glued, I, I mean, I have taped this with 3M mounting tape. It's just a very heavy duty mounting tape. And that's it. It cushions it, it keeps it in place. And I don't really feel the need to over-engineer in here. So maybe, um, you know, like gluing, do, putting a little hot glue or something to hold these wires might be good, but my plan is to get a different control, so I'm not really worried about that. And then this is just free in the box. Doesn't really get in the way of the spinning part. We just tuck everything over here. Just turn it on, spinning part, does the thing, so then you do, that's 100%. And that's how quiet this motor is. This motor is so quiet. So putting it all together, it's fairly simple. Um, but here's just a hairband I bought at the dollar store, and that's what will go on the motor. Um, and because this is a one directional system, um, if I want to do Z twist, I just twist it. So it goes that way while I'm spinning. And then if I want to go S twist, I just untwist this. Um, I will be getting a new one of these, I think, when I do spinner number two. So here, take, take what I've learned and uh, you can do it better. So anyway, just gonna put that through the hole here. There we go. And there we go. Put that, put the brake on. side because I did have it up here and I just pulled the lid up so and then it would hit that so that didn't work. You need to have your brake on the side here. And then once again put in There we go. That's an e-spinner.